So let's remind ourselves that we're interested in both the short and the long-term effects of exercise, or at least we have been. And we've previously looked at the immediate effect of exercise, and we have previously looked at also the short-term effects of exercise. Okay, so we've already looked at the immediate and the short-term effects. Today, we're interested in the long-term effects. And in this sense, I am talking about the effects of exercise after it has been done for months, months and years. Okay, so by this we're talking about a notion of adaptation so if we are training for running if we're swimming regularly whatever it happens to be if we're going to the gym doing pilates whatever it happens to be what are the long-term effects of this exercise thing over months and years well let's get started guys so look the first one i think this is super interesting actually we get a down arrow or a decrease in resting in resting heart rate now there's all kinds of factors that this relates to but the key point i want to make to you is that if the heart rate is below that's a less than symbol low lower than 60 beats per minute we refer to this as bradycardia okay bradycardia nice word for you to build into your kind of linguistic arsenal in pe bradycardia uh, resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute and the main point i want to make you about a lower resting heart rate is it gives you a bigger reserve or a range of heart rate that can be used during exercise itself an interesting thought of course now just a general point we might expect body shape to change body shape changes now again i want to be sort of clear here we're not saying the skeleton becomes a different length height and all these levers change in their length for example no we're saying that the musculature around the body change its form there might be less fat under the skin more muscle around the shoulders that changes body shape now, next point we might it's quite general again we might improve certain what i'm going to refer to improve c OFs, components of fitness. Okay, so we might be, this performer might become uh, more flexible, for example, increase in flexibility. This, this person might uh, improve their stamina, their aerobic endurance, that's going to happen. This person might improve the strength of these shoulders. This person might include, increase the muscular endurance of this tricep here. The components of fitness will get better of course that's ultimately apart from the feeling of it why we might be exercising now an example of that is we get i've mentioned it already we get an increase in muscle strength and again this relates directly to the components of fitness strength being a component of fitness we might get an increase in strength just to mention another one oh, that's so pink that one we get an increase depending on what we do in muscular muscular endurance okay we get an increase in muscular endurance. Now, again, I mentioned that with regard to, you know, could that be the case with this tricep brachii muscle here, for example? We get an increase in muscular endurance. Let's take it a bit further. We might get an increase in speed. Now, which of these performers would you argue is most likely to experience an increase in speed? We'd probably say not these guys here. Maybe this one here for doing this kind of weight training. Maybe this one, especially side-to-side -side movement as they uh, participate and perform for longer periods of time. And guys, finally, I mentioned the idea of flexibility. I'm going to give you a different word to use here. We might get an increase in suppleness. You know, we might be able to move our joints through a greater range of motion for example and increase up our in suppleness and can i just say again this one this one this one and this one they summarize the improvement in the components of fitness let's finish this off nice and strong please so we've got an increase in suppleness oh sorry i have i one more of those actually guys we might experience again depending on what we're doing an increase in cardiovascular endurance okay and especially that would be where this type of activity might be particularly relevant again there's an increase in the components of fitness let's finish this off oh sorry and let me let me put into there let's also use the word stamina an increase in stamina might also be a nice way of summarizing that point but we're very nearly there here we go this is quite a technical point i want to sort of go over it we're going to get an up arrow an increase in the size increase in the size of the heart okay and the word i really want to introduce you to here is the idea of hypertrophy hypertrophy now atrophy is the opposite of this but hypertrophy we can use this word when we are describing the increased scale or size of a muscle the heart being a muscle for example okay so we call this it, we call this cardiac hypertrophy we actually call it myocardial hypertrophy that's for another level but you know it's it's worth knowing that now if we reflect on why is this relevant the size of the heart why is that better well basically it increases stroke volume which increases maximal cardiac output and of course that's very very impact on sport performance um, 
that's everything from me, folks. Um, there, there are other things that, that, that take place as well, but these are the main ones I want you to be aware of for today.